Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about the best and worst products for rosacea. With me today, I have some of my least favorite stuff and I have some of my most favorite things. Everything from face wash to moisturizers, toners, uh, makeup, everything, makeup brushes. I have everything here with me today that I want to go over with you. And I am also going to go ahead and do a look today. By the time I post this video, it will be probably December. So I'm going to do a look that will be great for Christmas and New Year, something super festive, maybe a little crazy. We might do a little crazy lip color. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done. This is the hair that I slept in all night. Um, this braid has been in my hair since I think Wednesday and it is Saturday. So I am going to get myself together and I will be back with you to talk about products. Okay, so now that I have my fun look done for today's video, I am going to dive right into the products. Before I get started, I did want to make a couple comments about the look that I have going on today. Um, obviously, as you can see, one of my favorite colors in the world is teal. I love dark teal. I love bright aqua teal. So I really wanted to do a wintry look that sort of embodied my personality. So this is where I kind of went with this. There were some things that I would tweak if I did this again. Um, I tried a couple new techniques because I'm always looking for ways to apply my makeup more efficiently, more quickly. Um, so today I did try using tape to get that nice crisp line with my eyeshadow. Usually what I do to achieve this kind of a look is do my eyeshadow first, put my base on, get everything done as far as my top lid goes, and then I use my foundation and concealer to get underneath using my beauty blender and getting that crisp line. I think that works a little bit better for me just because it's something that I've been doing a lot longer and I've sort of mastered. Uh, the tape for me, I felt like I had to put my foundation and my face on first and then put the tape on and then do the eyeshadow simply because I felt like putting foundation and concealer and everything on after using that tape would mess up the crisp clean line. So that's what I did. And then when you take the tape off, it pulls off half of your makeup. I had to go back in with uh, some under eye makeup and I feel like it just kind of ruined my face makeup, which was looking really good at the time. So for me, tape is a no go. It also, I think, left some irritation under my eyes because tape involves glue and glue on my skin, especially being hypersensitive and a rosacea prone person that did not work for me. So other than that, um, I am pretty pleased with how everything turned out. I love all the colors. I love that my lipstick matches my shirt. Um, so if this, if you want to see something like this, a tutorial, comment below. Uh, make sure that if you're not subscribed and if you're interested in all of these skincare little tidbits as well as yoga, make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell, you'll get notifications for all of my videos whenever I post. Uh, and other than that, of course, as you all know, by now to follow me at yogi.blair on Instagram. I do a lot of fun stuff on there as well. So let's talk about this. Uh, we're talking about best and worst products as far as if you are in the hypersensitive category, if you're in the rosacea category, if you're in the uh, breakout prone category, I have for me the best and worst products. Some of these I have on hand, some of these things that I've thrown away, but I will show you what I'm referring to with a picture. So let's start off and talk about skincare. Let's talk about cleansers now. Disclaimer before we get started, as I know you all know, rosacea, acne, hypersensitive skin, very, very personal, right? It's not a what works for me is going to work for you sort of thing. So these are just what I have found to help me and they may help you. Don't be surprised if I suggest something and you try it and you may not love it. That's perfectly normal. So let's start with cleanser. Uh, let's start with worst first. Now, I, these both of my cleansers are made for sensitive skin. I will start out by saying that. And most of the stuff that I have has either said that it is non-comedogenic or it is for sensitive skin and I've found to have issues. So 
I used it, my dermatologist actually gave this to me and I continued to buy it while I was on Accutane. It was for, it was developed for people on Accutane and it worked the entire time I was on Accutane. So if you're on Accutane and you're using this, don't stop using it just because I say so. Um, I was continuing to use this when I came off of Accutane and that's when I started to notice that I was having some issues. This is a Veen Clean AC Cleanser. And it's not bad. And I never noticed a problem when I was on Accutane. When I came off of Accutane, that's when I started to have rosacea and this didn't do anything for me. And I found the fragrance to be a little annoying. This also has salicylic acid in it, which I just don't think, especially if you're on Accutane or if you're on a drug or an acne treatment that is drying to the skin, I don't see why that needs to be in here when you're formulating this for people with extremely dry skin. It has fragrance in it. This is a French company, so their fragrance may not be as scary as when you see fragrance on an, a, an American label. However, even if this is natural fragrance, for people with rosacea, that can be irritating. It is at the bottom of the ingredients. It's not something that is first and foremost on the list, which as you know, um, the ingredients at the top of the list are what there is more of in the bottle and what's down below, there's less of that in the bottle. So there is a sulfate in here, sodium dextrin sulfate. I don't know if that is a sulfate that can irritate skin, but I try to do sulfate free as much as possible simply because my skin is hyper, hypersensitive. Sulfates don't necessarily cause irritation, but they can in people with super sensitive skin. So this did not really, I don't think it made my skin worse. I just don't think it did anything super amazing. So I put this upstairs in my guest bathroom for guests to use because I don't think that it's dangerous. I don't think that it's harmful. It's just not for me. The best cleanser that I have found for my skin is the La Roche Purifying Foaming Cleanser. This says right on it that it is for normal to oily skin. It, and the ingredients are very minimal. I know you probably can't see very well, but there are not a ton of ingredients. And I personally, personally like to see as little as possible when it comes to you know, the food that I eat and everything. I would prefer things to have minimal ingredients. The less that's in there, the easier it is to determine if anything does bother you, what it is. Um, this says that it is soap-free, sulfate-free, oil-free, fragrance-free. There is no scent to this at all. Non-comatogenic, allergy-tested, paraben-free. So this has been fine for my skin. I like the way it feels better on my skin than the Clean AC. This, I do like the foaming action of this. Um, this is not very, you can get this to lather, but this lathers better and I just personally prefer that. Uh, I grew up with very oily skin and I felt like that lather took the oil off now that I'm not oily anymore. I find that that really helps to remove my makeup. I, as you all know, I use Cover Effects Foundation, which stays on your face really, really well. Um, I tried makeup wipes. I tried lots of things to try to get makeup off of my face and nothing seemed to get it off. Like it felt like I just had to keep wiping and wiping and wiping and wiping. One pump of this takes off, I would say 90% of my makeup. Eye makeup, eyeliner, um, lipsticks, per, um, liquid lipsticks. One pump of this takes most of my makeup off. And then if I'm wearing makeup and I'm using a cleanser, I used to try to use a toner or something to remove the rest of my makeup. Um, I was using Aveda's, I wanna say it was the, not the liquid exfoliant, it was the liquid hydrating lotion. It was, a liquid, 
but it was lotion. And I would put that on a cotton pad and try to get the rest of my makeup off. And then I'd use a toner. And then I would, do, and I have found that if I use the La Roche Purifying Foaming Cleanser and get most of my makeup off, I go in now with the Micellar Cleansing Water. This is Garnier. And this is, supposedly you can use this to clean your face. I don't do that. I use this when I have makeup on and I want to just check and make sure that I get that 10% that was left on my face off. It is very hard to get all of your eye makeup off with a cleanser because you are almost getting it in your eye. This helps get that remaining little bit of eyeliner off or mascara or the stuff in the corner. It is super gentle. I don't recommend getting it in your eye, but it does not hurt to get in your eye. So to me, I feel like it is safe to use kind of close to your eye. Um, I'm sure you're, it says avoid getting in eyes. So, I mean, don't actively try to put it in there, but it is gentle. Um, it does help get rid of the remaining liquid lip that will be left on your lips. Um, this, it's super gentle. Sometimes I even use this in the morning if I'm going to teach a morning class and I know I'm gonna wanna put makeup on later in the day, so I'm gonna wanna wash my face before that to make sure that my skin is clean, but I don't wanna go teach with a dirty face. I will use this with a cotton pad in the morning to clean my face real quick, go teach, come home, wash my face with cleanser, moisturize, and everything else. So this has not ever given me a problem. I would definitely recommend this over the Aveda Hydrating Liquid Lotion. And then after I get my face totally clean with my cleansers, I was using toners for a long time. Um, I can't even tell you all the toners that I've used. I've used a beta toner, which wasn't bad. Um, I would use rose water. I tried making my own toners. I still do use um, apple cider vinegar diluted with distilled water. Uh, I use organic apple cider vinegar. And I do still use that from time to time to sort of tone my face if I feel like it needs a little something else. But for the most part, the best toner that I have found for my skin in the condition that it's in now where it is super hypersensitive is a thermal spring water. And lately I have been using the La Roche thermal spring water simply because it's one of the cheaper ones that I've been able to find that is this size. And I just trust the ingredients because I have been using the cleanser with no problems at all. I used to use the Avene, the same brand as this. In the thermal spring water, I don't think that one is worse than the other when it comes to these. Uh, this one is just 50 cents cheaper and there are always coupons on it on Amazon. If you sign up for the auto ship, you get 5% off each time. And the last two times that I've bought this, I got 40 or 50% off the first time when signing up for auto ship. And then the next time that I ordered it, there was a 25% coupon. So I paid $10 for it one time. I paid $13 for it. I just ordered it again. And this is originally $18. So get this on Amazon and you will see that you do get some discounts. So after I tone my skin, the next thing is moisturizers. The worst moisturizer that I have found that is something that is said to be for rosacea prone, acne prone, hypersensitive, super dry skin was the Avene Clean AC Moisturizer. This is another one. Let's look at the ingredients. Oh, look, the ingredients aren't on here. Um, I find that to be irritating on a product. Um, just a quick side note. I don't want to go to your website to look for ingredients. I want the ingredients to be on the bottle unless the bottle is so small that you can't put the ingredients on there. Um, anywho, this, again, I don't know that it made my skin worse. I believe there's fragrance in here. I believe that there might have even been mineral oil in this or something. I don't like the smell. It almost smells medical to me. Uh, and I feel like it possibly could have led to some irritation. My skin got better when I stopped using the Avene and I moved into the La Roche. So I think maybe the fragrances, even if they are more natural, because again, it is a French company, they don't put as toxic of ingredients in things, but even the most natural of fragrances from pure essential oils can be irritating to people with hypersensitive skin. 
Now, the best, and you all have heard me rant and rave, the best, 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 best moisturizer that I have found for my skin is the Tatcha Water Cream. This is pricey, but it is worth every penny in my personal opinion. This feels so amazing when it's on your skin. It feels so good. It is so light, but so hydrating. Their products come with their own spatulas, which I love because you should not put your fingers in your products. Um, I just love it. And there is very minimal fragrance in there. It, it smells rosy. I know that the ingredients, it says Japanese wild rose for normal to oily skin, refreshing and anti-aging. Um, it smells like a natural smell. Rose is an anti-inflammatory and it can relieve redness. That's why rose water is such a big deal right now with the toners. Um, this does not irritate my skin. It could potentially irritate somebody's, but it does not. I love this. I feel like when I put this on at night or during the day, I notice after putting it on that my skin just seems happier. So that is the moisturizer that I have been loving and I asked for this for Christmas. I am going to keep using this. SPF, if you're going outside and it is daylight, whether it's cloudy, whether it's whatever, you should be wearing an SPF. The least favorite one that I have, which I forgot to grab, let me just, just sneak off to the side. The worst SPF that I found for my skin was the, I hate saying this, is the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen and SPF 50. Now, I don't know that this irritated my skin. I brought this with me to Cabo this year and I used it, I think once or twice and I was just so fed up with it. Um, I brought other SPFs with me and I'll show you my favorite one. But this just, it is so, um, and I just, I don't like mineral sunscreens. I know they're better for the environment. I know that they're, better for the ocean, but you cannot get this to rub into your skin. It is just so white cast. Oh my God. Sometimes filming is just a nightmare. I just got a notification that my battery is running low, which is fine. Uh, it'll last, but I film everything. My tripod is a selfie stick, so it's, you know, we make it work here in the Ferris household. So anyway, you can't get this to rub in. Even my fair, fair, fair skin, you cannot get this to rub in. And I can see how my concealer just does not look good anymore because of that tape. And I'm frustrated because I really enjoyed this look. Let's see if we can just rub that in for the camera just a little more, whatever. You know what, who cares? It is what it is. If you want a tutorial for this, I will not do the tape. We will make this look a lot better. Um, the worst as far as suns, I feel like the mineral feel, it's flaky, it's chalky, and I just feel like my skin doesn't love it. Um, I think this, I don't know if this caused irritation. It could have, I feel like, when I put SPF on, sometimes my skin is just not happy about it, but I still do it because it's important. My favorite SPF for the face is the La Roche Double Repair Face Moisturizer with UV Protection. They have this without SPF too, if you already have a favorite SPF. This is a nice moisturizer with, I believe, yes, SPF 30. So I do like this. It does have avobenzone, uh, homosalate, um, not natural SPF. I don't know why I can't find words today. Um, but I don't really go in the ocean, so I feel like it's not really as bad for, and sometimes, you know, and I've said this before to other people that have talked to me about having all natural skincare and all natural this and all natural that, well, I believe that it is important to make sure that you are not harming the environment. Sometimes there's a give and a take when it comes to your skincare. When you're hypersensitive, don't feel guilty for getting a product that you feel like might not be the best for the environment. If it works for you and you can find peace in knowing that your skin is not inflamed and irritated and red and itchy, 
it is what it is. It is okay. You're not going to kill the universe by using this. So that is my favorite SPF. Um, another thing that I have used to kind of help in the makeup removal process, or even as a little bit of an extra moisturizer, especially as we get into these colder months, was an oil. Now people, especially those with acne, might be looking at this and going, oh, what? You're putting oil on your face? Are you crazy? Well, when I got this one, I was. This is the Ultra Light Cleansing Oil by Neutrogena, and this made my face so angry. When I was using these foundations that are super high quality, they stay on your face, and I was looking for ways to help remove my makeup. And this just wasn't it. This, again, goes in my upstairs bathroom for guests that, excuse me, may need to remove some makeup. I cannot use it. And the reason why is because the first ingredient on here is mineral oil. And mineral oil can be very, very triggering to sensitive skin. So just check your products, guys. If you're wondering what on earth is this ingredient that is bothering my skin, it could be mineral oil. Uh, so I can't use this. Um, I've tried using it to even clean my brushes and it's just, no, just not working for me. What is, is the Jason Vitamin E body oil. Um, a friend of mine did a massage on me. She's a phenomenal massotherapist. And she gave me this after my massage. And it has no parabens, no sulfates, no petroleum, no phthalates. Um, and I read the ingredients. She gave it to me before we got started to see what was in it. No mineral oil. Um, it smells like almonds. There is almond oil in here. So just if you're allergic to any nuts or anything, be careful with that. Um, she used this because I have jaw issues. She used this to massage my jaw and the entire time in my massage in the back of my mind, I was like, oh my God, please don't break out my face. Please don't, please don't freak it out. Um, and after the massage, I did rinse my face with water, but I did not use any cleanser which oil does not really come off of your skin without some sort of cleanser or sudsing agent. So I noticed the next morning when I woke up that my skin actually looked better because I was having a pretty decent rosacea flare up that day. So last night I was getting ready for bed and I was like, I just, I didn't wear any makeup, but I was like, I wanna see what happens if I use this as a pre-cleanser? So I just kind of gave myself a, a jaw massage, rubbed it in, um, and then I cleansed my face and did my normal routine, put my Tatcha water cream on, and went to bed. And I woke up and my skin, as you saw in the video before we got started, before I put my makeup on, I thought my skin looked okay. Um, granted, that was just overnight, but I really think that this is gonna be a game changer for me along with the endless supply of things that I do to my skin. My skin routine is very, very long and I'm always tweaking it and it's all, it's just a thing. So highly recommend that. So that is mostly what I use on my face that is not makeup. So let's talk about makeup now. My vanity looks like a tornado ran through it and it is always so organized. Um, as far as makeup goes, let's talk about brushes before we get into anything else. I mentioned in my last video talking about um, my Savora VIB sale products that I bought and we did a Thanksgiving makeup look uh, and I was talking about products that I found to be friendly to my skin. Uh, I had mentioned brushes and I had mentioned that certain brushes are a little more scratchy than other brushes. And I feel like having a soft, fluffy brush that doesn't feel like it is abrasive to the skin really helps people that are sensitive to manual exfoliation or anything like that. So let's talk about the worst brushes. Um, I got these, it was an emergency. Uh, th this is the Walmart brand Equate makeup brushes. I don't know what, because usually, Equate is the generic form of something else. I don't know what these are a knockoff of, but I wouldn't even get those because this was just not good. And I know when you pay, I don't know what these were, maybe seven, eight dollars when you pay that much for a seven piece brush set, 
I got the eight piece Sephora brush set for 49 and even that might be considered cheap to some. These were just not good. They don't blend, they are soft, but they're almost too soft. They don't pick anything up, they don't blend anything. The handle is teeny tiny, you can't even, like my big ass hands, you can't even grab onto this brush. Like how am I supposed to even use this? I had forgot my makeup brushes when we went into town to visit our family because we live out of town and we had a wedding to go to. I was not gonna show up to a wedding barefaced. are you kidding me? So I had to go to Walmart and I didn't wanna buy a new set of nice brushes because I had my good brushes at home. So I, had, I bought this emergency set. I keep this in my suitcase, but I almost don't even want, I just wanna throw it away because they don't work. I just need to remember to bring my brushes. Um, you saw my brushes, they are drying on my drying rack. I just cleaned them all because we are going to be traveling and I need to pack them. Um, my Sephora brushes, I love those brushes. They're so soft, they blend things, I think beautifully, um, and they don't feel scratchy on my skin, which is so important to me. Um, another brush that I feel like is a little too hyped up are the Aveda brushes. I did keep a lot of mine simply because I need a brush that is, I needed a clean brush to always have a crease brush so I could blend once I'm done using my Sephora brush. So I needed to keep that. Um, I kept this because I don't really have a smudge brush. This is for doing my underneath of my eyes and other things. I use this for the inner corner as well. But here's the thing, hi baby, um, with Aveda products, I feel, now this is gonna sound bad, and I feel like I might get a lot of flack for this, if anybody ever sees this. Um, I used to work for an Aveda salon, and I love Aveda products. I still have a ton of Aveda hair products. I have a whole drawer full in here. This is just what's sitting on my counter. Um, I love the hair products. I feel like Aveda's makeup and makeup brushes are way too expensive for what they are. I don't feel like they perform well. I used to wear them exclusively. I used to exclusively wear Aveda. The only thing that I think is still worth anything is the dual pressed powder. And I don't really wear any powder now other than a setting powder, so I don't even know how I feel about that anymore. I used to use their liquid foundation. I, I, it was probably a tinted moisturizer and then their dual foundation over that to get coverage. And now all I need is my liquid foundation and to set certain areas of my face. So I feel like now that I know a little bit more about makeup, I just feel like Aveda makeup is way too pricey for what it is. These brushes are too pricey for what, I've broken so many of these and had to rebuy them when I worked there because they're just, thin and I know they're going for repurposed and made from recycled this, but these cork handles snap and their eyeshadows have no pigment and they don't blend and you have to pack them on to get any sort of payoff. So that's my two cents. Now, I still do have from my days of working there a ton of lip glosses. I have a few lipsticks left, but I threw away all of my eyeshadows because they were expired. And I like what I have now way better. Um, a foundation that I think is the worst that you can ever get for sensitive skin that claims to be okay for sensitive skin would be Tarte. Um, I wanted, when I got rid of all of my Aveda stuff, I wanted to move into Tarte because Tarte was similar to Aveda where it wanted to be clean, it wanted to be good for sensitive skin, it wanted to be cruelty free and vegan and whatever. And for some reason, those foundations just break me out. Rashes, everything. Um, I threw those away. I could not even do those anymore. And I believe I even returned one of them to get my foundation that I use now, which as we all know, the best foundation I think, if you are not dry, is Cover FX. I have normal skin and I still like this. It is very, very matte. If you're oily, this is going to be 
your new best friend. Uh, same with the concealer. The best concealer in the world is the Cover FX Power Play Concealer to go along with the Power Play Foundation. The worst concealer in the world, which I think I even mentioned in my last video, if I can find it in my mess. I hate it when things are messy. I cannot stand it. It just does not work for me. I loathe everything about, like, where is my stuff? I just had it. And I got everything out to do this video. And like, I know I have it. It's so annoying. This is just what I feel like my life is all the time. It's just me looking for things and knowing that I had them two seconds ago and now they're non-existent and I just saw it. There it is. The worst ever that has a lot of hype about it is the Age Rewind Maybelline. If you're sensitive, tread lightly. It might be fine for you. This burned my under eyes like no other and I had just rashes all along my under eyes and any it just it did not work for me I'm gonna give this to a friend of mine who doesn't have sensitive skin because I don't think the ingredients were that bad but it just didn't work for me there was something in there that triggered my sensitivity <sighs> what else Let's talk about primer. Um, now this I wouldn't say is the worst. I still like this primer a lot. I used to use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and I do like it. I do think it's nice. I don't think it did anything for my skin. I don't think it made it worse. I don't think it made it better. The primer that I use now, which you all know again and have heard me rant and rave about is the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I feel like when I take this off, my skin looks better than when I had it on, um, than when I didn't have it on. I love this. I feel like it m just makes this foundation and this concealer go beautifully. It makes it easy to apply. I know some people talk about how Cover FX is very um, fast setting. And with that primer, you have time to mold it into what you want it and it's just beautiful. Um, highlighters. I know, you know what, no. I don't have a highlighter that I don't like. I know in my last video I said that I didn't think that this was as pretty as the Benefit Tickle, and I lied because I used it, and it's different, but it is still really pretty. Um, I also gave this Clinique blush a bad rap because I said that I couldn't see it and it wasn't very pigmented, but my Benefit blush looked the same on my brush. And I think that's just the way blush looks on a black brush. Say that five times fast. I'm really impressed that I pulled that one off. Um, eyeshadows. My vanity, it has a little, I don't know why this even does this. The front of it pulls out. And I just don't know why, because it just, I always rest my elbows here to do my eyeliner and then, and it's a whole thing. Um, eyeshadows. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few things and you can take this with a grain of salt or not. The, I have two palettes that are involved with Jeffree Star. This is Morphe and Jeffree Star. This is just Jeffree Star. Um, I have my Morphe, which has a bunch of crap on it. I um, need to clean that off. I don't like it when things look dirty. All right. And then I have, of course, in my last video, we talked about the Carly Bible palette. I personally feel like my eyes aren't too, sen I mean, they're sensitive. I have rosacea. Of course, they're sensitive. Most people with rosacea have issues with their eyes. Um, even just vision issues and things. Um, I feel like the Morphe and the Morphe Jeffree Star palettes are the least problematic with my eyes. 
and I feel like these two, sometimes they're staining, sometimes I get a little patchy or itchy, but it's not something that I am super upset about. I knew getting these things that that was a possibility. I know with very pigmented shadows like these, I mean, come on, you might have some issues, but I love the colors, I love the blendability, and for what they are, I don't think that they're that bad. Tarte eyeshadows um, next to Aveda's were some of the worst shadows that I've ever used. Um, when I started getting these things, I had a Tarte palette as well. It was the pineapple palette. I threw it in my garbage can, but I'll throw up a picture of it here. The Tarte palette, <sighs> when I tried using it after I used any of these things, the blendability was terrible, the pigmentation was terrible. Um, I just realized that I would even try to like mix it and use like my Morphe, I have the Stunning Vibes palette, and nothing blended together. The Tarte was just so chalky and I threw it away. I just threw it away. I. Now I will tell you, there are a couple things I have by Tarte that I love. These are beautiful. I love this mascara. I will keep buying this. This is like my fourth tube of this or maybe, you know, my fifth. I have one here that I stocked up on. The Paint Pot. This is a beautiful highlighter. Beautiful for the inner corner, the lid. You could highlight your face with this. It's gorgeous. This is, I use this for my wedding. It's Stunning. It's an eyeshadow. Um, I have a Tarte lipstick. I have two Tarte lipsticks. Um, there are things by Tarte that are good. I just can't do some other stuff by them. Um, the best lipstick. Now, my lips aren't sensitive. I don't really have a problem. This is just a personal preference. I think the best lipsticks that I have right now are the Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's a tie between Anastasia Beverly Hills, this is the shade that I'm wearing now, so gorgeous, I love this, and Tarte. I have a ton, I got the lip kit that's um, newer at Sephora now with all the neutral shades by Anastasia and these are just, they feel so good on your lips, it's really hard for me to find a liquid lipstick that doesn't feel drying and gross and yucky. I would say, I don't know if I want to be honest because I don't know if people will be mad. Um, I feel like the worst liquid lip that I use that I still love, I love the colors and I will continue to wear them because I think that they're beautiful colors and I think that they last well. I, it's just the way they make my lips feel is the Jeffree Star liquid lips. Now, the instructions said that they were best applied to clean lips, so I didn't put anything underneath them. And I don't know if he just means you should scrub your lips before you put it on and then put on, like, cause I usually put a lip balm on under all liquid lips just because my lips get so dry with them, especially after being on Accutane. And I think that's part of my problem too. Um, I love Jeffree Star's products. I love the palettes that I have. I love the liquid lips that I have. I love the lip ammunition that I have. I have it on actually on top of this. Um, it was the shade Glazed. I, I like the stuff and I'll continue to use it. I think that they're really pretty colors. I just feel like they don't feel, like when you say velour liquid lip, I was thinking that it was gonna feel soft on my lips and not feel, like it honestly feels like my lips are, like I, it feels like it's caking off and like it's peeling off, but then I go check it in the mirror and it's not. So I think it's just my lips and just personal feeling and not anything that's wrong with his product. Um, so don't hate me. And I think that's all I have for you guys as far as my best and worst, ooh, setting sprays. I know I said this too. Um, I, this is a primer mist, but I use it as my setting spray and I think it looks like when I'm looking at myself in the mirror right here, I think my skin looks pretty good. It looks pretty even. I don't really see any 
creasing. I don't see anything too crazy. I feel like this just pulls everything together. Oh my gosh, we have a freaking battery notification again. Can I just see my phone? Thank you. And even in, like I'm trying to look in my camera to see, um, I don't think it looks bad on the camera either. It's obviously gonna pull way more um, flaws. So that's always nice. The worst setting spray is the Sephora one. I only use this as my spray on my eyeshadows that I want to pick up some more pigment. Um, this burns when I put it on, this doesn't. So I'm gonna keep using this. This was also, I think, $15. This is eight. Do what you want with that information. Um, so yeah, those are just, of course, my own personal opinions on a ton of products. Please don't hate me. Um, don't come after me if you hear me say something bad about Jeffree Star. I love watching his videos. I just finished watching him and Shane's last episode of their whole thing. I did not buy the Conspiracy palette. Um, the colors just weren't for me. But again, I love the palettes of Jeffree's that I have. I love the colors of the liquid lips and I'm going to continue to wear them. I just feel like the feeling of them is a little different than the Anastasia ones and even the Tarte ones. Um, I do just want to say for a minute, after watching that last video of his, of Shane's about the whole thing with their launch of their palette, I was really shocked by the amount of people that wanted Shane to talk more about the drama and wanted him to dive into the crap with Tati and James Charles. And they showed clips of people being angry for them not talking about all that stuff and not feeding into the drama. And I'm just shocked by that because he wasn't there. How can he give an opinion on something that he wasn't there for? It makes no sense to me why people want to feed into this kind of negative crap and it just it makes it's this is the reason why I have no desire to be a part of a beauty community I do this because this is a passion of mine I do this to show you what works for sensitive skin because there's a lot of it out there and I do this to kind of show you what I like to use if you are into the more yogic side of my channel but you want to sort of dive into skincare or makeup or something of that nature and you wanna know what products are cruelty free or what you feel like you can buy without feeling guilty, um, who, what kinds of products like to recycle or use renewable energy. That's the one thing I love about Aveda is that uh, they are so environmentally conscious and it's so important in this industry. I see, I watch so many YouTube videos with beauty gurus, um, which I just don't know if I even like that term guru when you're talking about anything other than an actual guru, but doesn't matter, I digress. Um, I just feel like I see all these videos of all these people, they get all these PR packages, which isn't their fault. People send them that stuff out of their own volition, but these people have rooms filled from floor to ceiling with products that are gonna go bad or that they're, they've never even opened or it's just wasteful. And I feel like the industry is wasteful. And I'm not berating anybody for their choices, for what they buy, for what they have. My dog is telling me that she needs to go out, so I'm gonna make this quick. I just feel like it is a, all of our culture is wasteful. I try to only buy so many things. There's a reason I have only four eyeshadow palettes because even that I know I'm not gonna use all of those shades by the time that they expire. I'll probably still use them after they expire. <laughs> but. There's a reason that I only have four because that's all I can in good conscious purchase because I know that they're going to go bad before I use them. There's a reason I only have one setting powder and there's a reason that I only have so many things is because I want to be environmentally conscious. I don't wanna throw things out when they're still full. Um, I keep these products in my bathroom for guests to use because I don't just wanna throw them away. I want them to be used until 
they are gone or bad. And I feel like that's just something. The drama and the wastefulness and everything in all kinds of, I mean, let's face it, even yoga is a community that if you're not careful can become really bad really fast with drama and things that you don't wanna be involved in and it being about you know your fame or how many followers you have on Instagram or how many subscribers you have on YouTube and it just becomes not about the practice anymore. So that's my rant for the day. If you wanna see this makeup look, please comment below, let me know. I, it'll be better next time, I promise. I had some issues with that tape. I had um, issues with my lashes. I had to take them off like three times and reapply them. So my eyeliner doesn't look the best that it could. It looked really good for a minute though. You're just gonna to have to take my word for it. Um, but yeah, if you wanna see this or a look like it for the Christmas, New Year's time, comment below, let me know. I'll put that out. I hope you all enjoy your holiday season and have a happy new year. I probably won't post too many other makeup videos other than maybe that one. So happy new year, guys. I hope that I see you in the new year. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time. I hope you all live happy, live free, live well.